You're listening to The Stephen Toriello Show, building a platform of liberty for people in search of truth with a dash of hope and a life worth living. The Stephen Toriello Show. And now, here's Stephen. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the show. So I was scrolling through the news, as always, plenty of articles to read to you. Plenty of news is happening out there, especially with us on the brink of World War III, the alliances that the Biden administration has inadvertently created, like Russia and China combining forces. And now it seems like South Africa, Niger, and the the coup that happened over there. It's not looking good. I actually had a colleague of mine. Uh, he texted me and he said, "So what is going on with these with these Chinese and Russian ships off the coast of Alaska?" And I said, "Well, they're taunting us. That's that's what it was. And we were sending three destroyer ships that way because for some reason we didn't have any in the area. And this, mind you, is a key strategy for the United States Navy is to have." naval ships in strategic areas at all times and we just didn't have any there which is surprising being how you know with the with the increase in uh, russia and putin's aggression towards the west that we don't have anybody or any naval uh naval battleships by alaska they were three days away um and i was reading about that for a little bit but there was something else i wanted to touch down on what I think is important for people to know, because like I've been saying, we are up. This is election time. And I think people were extremely misinformed. And I think our media, the press, which is supposed to be on our side, which is now a state run government media outlet now, has done a very, very big disservice to this country and the people by not being honest with them just to get their guy across the finish line. I think it's wrong and extremely dangerous for the press to pick sides. We've always known that the press has had a bias, but I'll be honest, I've watched news clips from the 70s and 80s. And when you listen to the news, especially like, you know, CNN, you know, the main, the legacy news outlets, you honestly cannot tell which party these people support. Now, the bias is just out in the open. We literally have news outlets that one side of the country watches because it it confirms their bias. And so they watch it because it makes them feel good. And so now we don't have an honest media. We have a weaponized media. We have a media that's being used as a propaganda tool against the people. And I've said this multiple, multiple times before. We are in an information war. That's what we're in. Um not to be confused with Alex Jones's Infowars, but man, was the name fitting. Uh, and actually, Alex Jones is an extremely intelligent man. Um, I know, you know, he had some conspiracy theories with the Sandy Hook shooting and stuff like that. But the guy's like ninety eight percent accurate on a lot of the on a lot of the theories that he talks about. Extremely intelligent guy. And so he picked a very fitting name, InfoWars, for his outlet. But like I said, I think the media is doing a a disjustice to the people. And I think in 2020 was the people were just just disinformed, way disinformed. The media uh, purposely misinformed their viewers with lies, with manipulation, with propaganda. And just like you're seeing now with all the Trump indictments, they're being used in conjunction with the Department of Justice, which is the the hammer for the Biden administration. So the Democrat Party and the administrative state are so scared that Donald Trump could win. They have thrown everything in the kitchen sink at Donald Trump and and his supporters. And so that means the media is colluding with the Department of Justice. The Department of Justice is colluding with the intel agencies like the FBI. 
And all of these people are essentially working for the White House. Yeah, that is what we're up against. And so you're talking about a massive propaganda campaign that we're coming up into. And we're actually in now. The propaganda hasn't stopped. There was maybe six months after Donald Trump left office where the media just didn't know where they were going to go. And I remember having conversations with people and discussing like, so what is the media going to talk about now that Donald Trump's gone? And like I said, that lasted about six months. And the moment that Donald Trump announced he was running, even before he announced, when there was a hint that Donald Trump was going to be running again in 2024, you can already see the media starting to take out the knives. I'm serious. I noticed a night and day difference. And, you know, don't get it twisted. The media love Donald Trump. They love having him. That gives, I mean, their their ratings have never been higher. Their ratings are only high because of Donald Trump. Donald Trump saved the left-wing media Pravda outlets like CNN, MSNBC. Literally nobody watches those outlets unless they're talking about Donald Trump, and that's all they talk about. I told you guys this before to do the to do the bias test. And what you do is you you turn on Fox News and they're going to be talking about various different things. Um you know, organ harvesting in China and you know, the currency, the economy, um all kinds of stuff. Fox will talk about everything. And then you flip the channel to CNN and it's Donald Trump. And so this is the only way for them to get views is to have the the leftist Bolsheviks watching their news. It's not news, it's media. They're propaganda outlets now. Um, they're confirmation bias outlets. That's what it is. These people only watch it. It's like Trump porn. It really makes them feel good. And so that's why they watch it. So I thought the media did an extremely, this, I blame everything that we're experiencing right now. I, and I mean everything. I'm talking about the pandemic, how they politicized the COVID virus to try and to defeat Donald Trump. That's why they did it. That's why they had death tickers at the bottom of the screen every 15 minutes, reminding their viewers how many people died. And in in no short words, without actually saying it, implying that it was all Donald Trump's fault. And in fact, a lot of people just come out and say, this is all Donald Trump's fault. That was a situation, the, the pandemic was a situation, it was damned if he did and damned if he didn't. But I will, I will tell people the truth that more people died under Joe Biden of COVID than they did with Donald Trump. So I don't know. You do the math on that one. And Joe Biden came in with a vaccine already ready because you remember that the vaccine, the Pfizer and Moderna didn't announce that they had a functioning vaccine until two days after the election. You guys remember that, right? These people, they, they specifically waited. I want to know. I want to know that answer. So who was Pfizer and Moderna colluding with to wait two or three days after the election to announce that they finished and completed the vaccine? Whose idea was that? Because we know that was politicized. The entire damn thing was politicized. And look how many people it got killed. When they were sitting there talking about how how hydroxychloroquine was bad, that people shouldn't take it. And, you know, it was the one of the most safest drugs on the planet. And billions of of tablets were taken. Billions of doses were taken of hydroxychloroquine. The, it actually won a Nobel Peace Prize for for its use in uh, viral infections. And then when Donald Trump comes out and says that hydroxychloroquine may be a suitable treatment until the vaccines come. All of a sudden, hydroxychloroquine was was evil. It was poison. And if you took it, you would die. How many people did that get killed? The media harped on hydroxychloroquine so much that doctors and pharmacists stopped giving hydroxychloroquine to people all because of the media. The media hyped it up. Instead, what the media should have did was, oh, yeah, you know, he may have a point and bring on some science and experts. You know, they actually handpicked which scientists and experts they were going to interview. And they only picked the ones that were pushing their narrative. They were only pushing doctors that would say hydroxychloroquine could cause heart problems, but never did. They would always bring on doctors and experts saying that, 
You guys remember what they said about ivermectin? I think they said it was horse paste. You guys remember that? They accused Joe Rogan of taking horse paste and was making fun of anybody that took ivermectin. How many people did that get killed? This media politicized the COVID pandemic to hurt Donald Trump, to kneecap him in the election. Okay, that was in 2020. Look at all the damage these people have done in the name of getting Donald Trump. Think about it. I, I played an audio from Whoopi Goldberg a couple weeks ago where she was saying, like, when did things get weird? Like, things are really weird now. Things got weird when Democrats decided that they were going to destroy everything in their path if it meant to getting the Donald Trump. That's when things got weird, where you would object clear and obvious truths right in front of your face. But because Donald Trump said it, you had to say the opposite. We literally have open borders right now because Donald Trump wanted secure borders. This is, this is the mentality that they have, and the wake of destruction that they have left behind is astronomical. There's no words to describe it, how much damage these people have done to our country. The Democrat Party, and I've been saying this for a long time, the Democrat Party, this Democrat Party, this is not your dad's Democrat Party. It's certainly not the party that I was a part of. This particular, this Democrat Party that we've been seeing this last decade is the most destructive political force this country has ever seen. And the Democrat, and that's saying a lot because the Democrat, the Democratic Party has a very, very shady history, very bad. And how, how this party is even around still is beyond me. It is because they've learned how to weaponize the language a long time ago. They learned all these language tactics well before Republicans and even still are better than Republicans at it. They project everything they're guilty of onto their opponents. They're masters at deflection. When Joe Biden gets in trouble for classified documents, somehow they deflect everything on Donald Trump and people don't even know that Joe Biden got caught with classified documents. We don't even know where that investigation's at. They're masters at manipulating the language when it comes to completely changing the meanings of words and the definitions, literally. Like they, the Webster's Dictionary has changed their, their meanings and definitions of, of certain words. I think like 13 or 14 different times they've, they've went through these, these definition changes in the last eight years just to get Donald Trump, just to keep up with the ideology. These people are now rejecting fundamental truth in order to keep up with their ideology, like men can give birth. I refuse to be lectured by any party that supports the notion that men can give birth. These are not serious people. And the Democratic Party knows better, but they know they have to come out and say that or nobody will vote for them. The things that this party has done for votes is unbelievable. And so, like I said, the media does not report on that. The media does not report on the Democrat Party's destructive history when it comes to this country. All the way back from the Civil War, since the Democratic Party's conception, it has been, it has been the number one cause for all the evil stains on this country. And one of those stains is eugenics. That's what I wanted to talk about. That's what I wanted to talk about real quick. Um, I'm going to try and get a full show out, but we'll see where we're at. We'll see where we go. So eugenics is most definitely another Democrat ideology. This was one of those extremely damaging ideologies put forth by the Democratic Party. So eugenics was... And just, I know you've probably heard of the word before, um, but again, since this is the Democrats' dark past, since this is the Democrats' dark history, you'll never hear them talk about it, and you'll never hear the media talk about it either. So eugenics was a controversial movement in the late 19th and early 20th century, and it aimed to improve the genetic quality of the human population through selective breeding and controlled reproduction. It was based on the idea of improving the genetic traits of a population by promoting desirable traits and discouraging or eliminating undesirable ones. 
eugenics had both positive and negative aspects, with some proponents aiming for improvements in public health and genetics, while others advocated for the unethical, discriminatory practices that led to human rights abuses. Yep. And mind you, Margaret Sanger, the founder of eugenics, was a Democrat. Okay? Eugenics, when it comes to the black community, was supported wholeheartedly by the Democrat Party. And I have an article here from the Federalist Papers. It's, a, it's older. It's from 2017. But I think it's fitting for this particular conversation. So I want to go ahead and read it to you because I think it's important that people know the Democrat Party's evil past. So a flashback from Brian Thomas, Modern American Progressives, which is the Democrat Party has, I want to say, have a, has adopted the progressive movement as like their redheaded stepchild. We're like they really need the progressive movement because it helps it helps uh, solidify their base and it helps them get votes. But like they don't really love it and they're willing to toss it to the side whenever they want. But I think at this point they can't toss it to the side because the progressive movement makes up probably 50 percent of their vote, their voting base. This is why you're seeing all this craziness when it comes to our schools, transgenderism, all of it, the mass the Planned Parenthood. All of it is because the Democrat Party has adopted the progressive movement. And these progressives, this progressive movement has always been around. And ever since it's been around, it's always been damaging. Always. Because progressivism gets it, it, it needs to constantly change things. And I guess if you've heard that saying, don't fix it if it's not broken, that doesn't fly with these people. They never stop. Never. That is why they always take things too far, like abortion. Okay, like sexualizing children. You know, you can't just have sex ed in school. Now you got to have full blown, you know, conversations about gender ideology and telling kids that they may not be a boy or they may not be a girl. This is part of the progressive movement. And the Democrat Party has absolutely 100 percent adopted the progressive movement. So back to this article from the Federalist Papers, and it's titled, Why Democrats Are the Party of Eugenics. So a flashback from Brian Thomas, modern American progressives cheering for a Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders presidency have forgotten their history. And they, they do it on purpose. They purposely, they know their history. They do. I Actually, I don't know if these new progressives do because they don't know any history. They think that history started the day they were born. Like they think their lives are so important that nothing else existed before them and anything that did was probably dumb and evil. And if they don't change anything in their lifetime, then their life will have no value or no meaning. This is why we're seeing the progressive movement like we've never seen it before. These people are look, they're looking for a purpose. They're trying to give themselves a meaning in their, in their life because they don't believe in God. A very, very large portion of the progressive movement does not believe in God. And just like G.K. Chesterton said, a man that doesn't believe in God, it's not that he doesn't believe in nothing. It's actually much worse. It's that he'll believe in anything. And that is what we're dealing with when it comes to the progressive movement. A lot of them are secular. And so what happens, or they'll claim they're secularists, but what happens is, is they believe in anything, which means they'll believe in climate change. They'll believe in transgenderism. They'll worship Dr. Fauci and the vaccine. They'll worship the government. These people will, they, they always feel a need to worship a higher power, but yet they don't believe in God. That is extremely dangerous. And so that's essentially what the progressive movement is in a nutshell. Everything that comes out that they feel like gives them purpose and meaning, they almost worship like of God, and they take it extremely serious, and it essentially overpowers everything that they believe in. So, for instance, like with the masking, when these people were told by the government to wear a mask, like they wanted to force everybody to wear the mask. 
Like they do, they do not want people to have individual freedoms. They feel like the government knows best and that if everybody would just listen to them, then everybody would be living a much happier life. Even though most of these people are not happy, they, they're done trying to debate on individual freedom. They just want the government to have control over everybody. That, in a nutshell, like I said, is the progressive movement. So I want to go ahead and get into this article because it's extremely important where the Democrat Party is, where it has come from, and the progressive movement that it has that it's adopted. So back to the article, the rise of the progressive movement is not something to be proud of. Progressivism, still working to empower government and cripple the individual, has horrifying roots, the cornerstones of which are eugenics and forced sterilization. The Wall Street Journal reports, nowadays eugenics is portrayed as an unfortunate detail in the story of an otherwise glowing movement, progressivism. Eugenics served as a key tool of the progressive policymakers of the 1920s. Darwin's ambiguity on the question of whether evolution resulted in progress or merely change left enough leeway for progressives to claim society must take charge of its own evolution. Mr. Leonard, the author of the book Liberal Reformers, notes the consequences of progressive Darwinism were policies as imprecise, superstitious, and inhumane as any they superseded. The perversity commenced in the asylums to which state officials packed off the infirm, the old, repeat criminals, and anyone whom they've judged somehow physically or mentally challenged. So great was the faith of state officials in their own diagnosis that the officials assumed even radical measures such as forced sterilization to be justified. Sound familiar? This, is, this was back in 2017, folks, when this article was written. And actually, some of these stories are from articles a long time ago. So it actually, this particular article in The Federalist jumps from, it takes different articles from different papers and from different times. It just doesn't have the dates. But so this was back in 2017 when this was written. Does it not remind you exactly what happened during the pandemic where these people were willing to round up anyone that didn't wear a mask and put them in re-education camps? These people were willing to segregate schools based off vaccinated and unvaccinated kids? Oh, yeah. These people wanted the military. And I'm not joking. I'm not shitting around. I've seen people say this on Facebook. You won't hear them say that now because... You know, now they'd be called a lunatic. But back then, I seen people writing where they thought the government should go door to door with the military and force families to take the vaccine by force, literally holding families down and driving a needle into their arm. I seen people say that kind of shit. It was so mind boggling. But this goes to the, the to the bigger picture, how much faith and trust they put in to the experts. You notice how that's how it always is. The experts say that the climate is changing. The experts say that climate is an existential threat. The experts say that the vaccine stops the spread. Or the experts say that if everybody just gets vaccinated, then COVID will go away and so on and so forth. So this is where this is where that not believing in God, but believing in anything comes into play. These people will worship literally anything that seems to have a higher power to them and not just to them, but has a higher power over individuals, okay? So whatever they feel like can force their will onto other individuals, they'll support and they'll worship. So back to the article. Tens of thousands of inmates were duly sterilized, and state officials, far from hiding their work, trumpeted the news so loud that they got the attention of Europeans, especially the Germans. Oh, yeah. U.S. courts upheld that state sterilization policies, concluding that the state's power indeed ranged broadly enough to cover cutting the fallopian tubes. Yeah, so they were actually cutting women's fallopian tubes as a form of sterilization. <sighs> That's progressivism, folks. So the goal of progressivism was not to react to change while maintaining America's founding principles of personal freedom and limited government. Government needed power over the people to create a good society, and goodness was not up to the people to define. I couldn't have said it better myself. So in other words, they're perfectly okay with giving the government as much power as it needs so that the government can create a good society. 
You see what I'm saying? They feel like if people would just listen to the government, then the government would create a good society. This is why they want universal basic income. This is why they want universal health care and all the other things. They want the government to pay people to sit at home and just like that. That's where socialism comes in. This is why these people are socialists. The progressive movement is the socialist movement. I would say almost the same thing. All right, back to the article. There were new self-evident truths in America determined by biologists who didn't concern themselves with evidence. Traits deemed undesirable regarding lifestyle, mental capacity, and certainly race were genetic and needed to be bred out to ensure a better and more evolved society. Yeah. Imagine that. These progressives, just like they supported the masks, just like they supported the forced vaccinations on millions of Americans, they also forced sterilization through eugenics. Oh, yeah. Yep, that's the Democrat Party, ladies and gentlemen. That's the progressive movement. So here's an older article, Library of Law and Liberty, explains, in short, the guiding principle of the progressives, domestic reforms, The aim that guided their assessment of existing social conditions was a felt obligation to improve the relative level of physical, mental, and moral development in America. For the progressives, the government's obligation in this regard was perfectly compatible with treating different races whom they believed were at varying stages of development differently in law and policy. Think about that. This is how the Democrat Party and the progressives thought about different races. They actually thought different races were in different stages of human development. That's how little the Democrats think of people that don't look like them. And I know it may confuse you now because they claim that the other side is racist when it's actually them that are the racists. They've been the party of race all the way back to the Civil War, where they were the Confederates and they fought to keep slavery. Okay, they wanted to secede from the United States because they did not want to give up their slaves. That's the Democrat Party and the progressive movement. So perhaps nowhere is the progressives willingness to run roughshod over individual liberty for the sake of improving America generally. As stark as in their support for eugenics between 1907, when Indiana enacted the nation's first sterilization law and the 1970s, when the practice finally ceased, approximately 60,000 Americans were sterilized. Yep. I actually didn't know that about Indiana. Indiana is my home state. That's where I'm from. I'm in Florida now, but I live. I was raised in Indiana. I was actually born in Portsmouth. My dad was in the Navy. Um. And we kind of just moved all over the place, but I was raised and all my friends, Indiana, I would say is my home. And I didn't know this about Indiana, but that's crazy. From 1907 to 1970, sterilization was legal. It was the law. So Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, and their millions of supporters proudly identify as progressives. Is the past nothing to worry about? It absolutely is something to worry about. This is is why I always say the Democrat Party have mastered the language. How many people knew that the Democrats were the party of eugenics? How many? How many people knew that the progressive movement that was adopted by the Democrat Party a long time ago were part of the sterilization of 60,000 Americans in this country? Now, I'm not saying that it was only Democrats, and you have to ask yourself, well, where was the GOP? You know, where where were the Republicans? I agree. The same way, the same thing that you're seeing now <clears throat> when it comes to the GOP is what, how the GOP has always been. The Republicans have always been weak and feckless. They are a very, very weak party. They would rather be controlled opposition than to be leaders and take any flack. So in other words, it's a giant party of cowards. That is what the GOP is, and the Democrats adopted the progressives, and that is why the Democrats run roughshod over the Constitution. They can literally destroy the rule of law while wrapping themselves up in the Constitution. That's what the Democrats do, and I'm telling you, they have always been this way, and they always will be this way. The Democrat Party must be destroyed. This is a very evil party. I did not used to say this stuff, folks. I'm telling you, I was I was a Democrat. I voted for Obama. I have never those words have never came out of my mouth up until about four years ago. Five years ago, the Democrat Party is evil. It is an evil party. 
and it needs to be destroyed. The Democrat Party is the enemy of this country. Look how much they've destroyed in just two and a half years. That's just with them having power. Look how much they destroyed when they didn't have power. When actually the GOP had power. The, the Republicans had the, the Senate, they had the House, and the White House for two years. What did they get done? Nothing. Nothing. Because to them, Donald Trump was too scary. To them, Donald Trump had to be dealt with. And so they got nothing done. You guys remember uh, John McCain giving the old thumbs down on the abolishment of Obamacare. You know how much, you know how much damage that caused to the healthcare industry? What, to give 20,000 people health care? It completely destroyed our healthcare industry. And then you'll hear people talking about how it's, how it's helped them you know, take care of their illness and help them with their medications. Okay, that's great. Well, what about the 325 million other people whose insurance premiums just quadrupled? And now it's not even close. You guys remember you used to go to the doctors and have to pay a $5 copay or your bill would be like $150. Now you come out of the emergency room and it's, it's, it could be $10,000 and that's without an ambulance ride. Like it's crazy what they did to our healthcare industry, all because the GOP was not willing to step up and do what they had to do. The Republican Party has always been the cowards, always. And just like when all these things were happening, like where Democrat progressives were supporting eugenics, the GOP did nothing. They sat back and did nothing. They're perfectly happy getting slapped in the face just so long as the Democrats don't ball up their fists. I'm telling you, this is, this is why people do not like the Republican Party. And I'm one of them. I only obviously vote Republican because it's a two-party system, which is another failure that we're experiencing right now. The two-party system is a failed system. It has failed. This, this entire system that we have right now is broken. Our judicial system is broken. Our executive branch is broken. Our Congress is broken. Our politicians are broken. Every single thing, every single aspect of this country has been broken. We are so far off from what the founding fathers had intended for this country. It's not even funny. And the government is responsible for all of it. Think about it. People don't create inflation. You guys remember what Milton Friedman said when it comes to inflation? Government creates inflation, not the people. Inflation can only be created by the government printing more money. And so this is why we're now in $32 trillion in debt, because the government cannot stop spending money. I want you to think about this. The government, in the last two and a half years, the Biden administration has spent over $6 trillion. $6 trillion. Where is that money? Where is it, folks? Where did it go? Where did $6 trillion go? It's not, we're not talking about billions, but trillions. You're talking about in 1940, I think I read this somewhere, in 1940, what was our debt in 1944? Let me see here. So in, yeah. So in 1944, our debt was $200 billion in 1944. So think about that. 1944 to now. We're up to $32 trillion in debt. Yeah. Obama ended his administration in $19.5 trillion in debt. We are now in $27 trillion in debt. But this is an older article. So this is all government created. And what do we have for it? Seriously, think about it. Do you know how much money that is? Do you know what we could have with $32 trillion? And you got people living on the streets. There was a there was a report that I read where they they calculated that forty billion dollars could fix fifty percent of our homeless problem in the United States. Think about that. F forty billion could fix fifty percent of the homeless crisis in this country. We just sent that to Ukraine. We're in debt. We're, we, we've already paid Ukraine over $100 billion. And we're getting ready to send more. The Biden administration wants to send more. More money. Another aid package. 
in a war, which we're going to be talking about on next show, in a war that has no end in sight. No end in sight, the Ukraine war. And I just read, you know what, I, I, I got this right here. I saved this article just now. Um, you guys remember where the Wagner group was, was marching towards Moscow and you had the, the experts on MSNBC and CNN talking about, oh, it's over for Russia. This is just the sign of, of Russia to, to fall. And look, I am not a, I, I am not a supporter of Russia. I am not a supporter of Ukraine. I have no skin in this game. I just want people to stop dying. I think this war is ridiculous. Thousands and thousands of people are being slaughtered over a border dispute, over land dispute. I mean, I get there used to be wars and, and, and campaigns like this for thousands of years, but we're talking thousands of people dying in the year 2023 over land. <laughs> and this is what's crazy. Russia just played everyone for fools. Wagner mutiny was staged. Special operation coordinated with Putin. <laughs> yeah. So that entire thing where the where the the Wagner group was marching towards Moscow and CNN and all the military experts were saying, "Yes, it looks like it's the end for Putin now." It was all staged. All of it. For what reason? We have no idea. But I guarantee you it was so what I think it was, was so the West wouldn't send more aid. I think what, what they did, and I'm sure it's probably not it because I'm not, a, I'm not a war expert. I'm not an expert on these things. But to me, it makes sense. If the West thinks that the war is almost over because, Putin, because Putin's biggest mercenary group is going up against them, if the if the West thinks it's if the thinks the war is almost over, why would the West then send more tanks, more supplies, more money? They wouldn't. Why would they do that? They wouldn't. And I think that's why they did it. They probably did it for many other reasons. But the thing is, is the West got played. The United States military is so predictable, man. So predictable. These people play our leaders for fools. This is why Donald Trump was so effective. And you've heard this many, many times before from a lot of military experts that say it was Donald Trump's unpredictability is what made people fear him the most. Where one second he's sending soldiers to guard oil and tells his people he, he's like he was more honest about things he should have lied about. But he tells the American people that they're sending troops to guard oil going and shaking the hands of Rocket Man over there in North Korea one minute and then the next minute dropping a freaking Moab on Iranians and then and predator droning and hell firing a, a, an ISIS terrorist. And then not only that, but getting on stage and telling the entire world that he died like a dog. <laughs> he got on stage and he said, we killed that man and he died like a dog. <laughs> We, people around the world have never seen anything like this before. Until then, America's military was so predictable. Our, our, our geopolitical stature was so predictable. Our politics was so predictable. And, you know, it's, it's just, it's crazy to see that a guy from New York, a real estate mogul, billionaire from New York, come in and scare the the most ruthless leaders of the world to a point to where peace was actually breaking out all over the Middle East with the Abraham Accords. I shit you not, this was what we were witnessing during the Trump administration. Some of the most wildest years this country has ever seen. And I'm not saying wild as a bad thing. I'm just saying the most shocking, unprecedented things we'd ever seen and not bad, but actually good. People... Countries in the Middle East were starting to ally with one another. Think about that. Peace in the Middle East. No new wars. You had everybody scared. Putin did, would never have dreamt of, of invading Ukraine. You serious? Nothing like this would have happened if Donald Trump would have stayed president. None of this. 
because first of all, there was a lot of dumb decisions that the Biden administration made to, to make Putin invade Ukraine. Like Joe Biden getting up there and saying, well, if it's a small incursion, then that's no big deal. Like, who does that, man? Seriously. I honestly think Joe Biden wanted this war, and they do. This government, this corrupt Washington, D.C. swamp, it wants war, ladies and gentlemen. It does not want peace. War brings in money. War brings in business. You remember that line from that movie, Lord of War? With Nicolas Cage, where he's talking about his guns, where he's like, I don't care which side gets my guns just so long as they're firing. Yeah, so that's exactly how the globalists think of war. We get sent off to go die, and they get back and collect all the money. All of it is for profit. All the shit you see on the movies, all the way going back to ancient Rome and like that movie The Gladiator. One of the best movies of all time, by the way, one of my favorites, and how the corruption was within the Roman Empire then, that kind of stuff actually happened. There is, you know, just like that, the show House of Cards, like there's real corruption happening in our government. Like all the shit you see on the movies, it actually happens in real life. Our government, that corrupt, nasty, swampy Washington, D.C., is so corrupt. It's it's unbearable. It it's so corrupt. It's obvious now. Like people are they are doing corrupt shit out in open. They don't even care who sees it anymore. You have the FBI that just does whatever the hell it wants and don't even answer the questions. They not only do they not answer the questions, they don't even feel like they have to answer the American people's questions. You've been you've been watching them. Look at the Department of Justice, been completely weaponized and politicized by the Biden administration. It's not the it's not Joe Biden, folks. It is whoever is running Joe Biden. I just watched a video of Joe Biden in 2018. 2018 do a speech. The guy looked like he was 20 years younger. No mess ups, no mumbling, no stuttering, no nothing. The guy has aged. It seems like 20 years in the last two and a half years. He cannot do this. This is why the entire world looks at us and laughs. This is why Putin said, I'm going to go take what I think is mine. I'm going to go kick Ukraine's ass. Why wouldn't he? Which brings me to my next thing. We're going to be going to war, folks, with China. I'm telling you, China is preparing for war. This is like, you know, I've been saying this for months. One of the first episodes I did on this show was talking about the beginning days of World War III and how we're in them right now. And we are. These are the beginning days of World War III. All because our government, the corrupt Washington establishment, wants war. They always have. Why do you think this country has always has been in stupid ass wars since World War II? Think about how many endless dumbass wars we've been in, where thousands of American citizens and soldiers, our most valued treasure of this country, are sent off to go die in a war like Vietnam. How much money uh, was generated because of war, because of that war? That's what it's all about. You can't sit there and tell me that there's no correlation between Joe Biden getting the presidency and within, I don't know, four or five months, we're right back into another war. What was it, six months? We went from one 20-year war right back into another 10-year war. And they think, like, they, they know that it doesn't pull good with people, especially if we're sending our own soldiers. And so that's why we're not sending soldiers, we're just sending money. So they can come up with this stupid talking point, oh, well, we're just sending money, and it's just a fraction of our, of our uh, GDP. It's just a fraction of our military budget. Yeah, well, maybe our military budget's too much, too. I mean, when you're talking, I don't mind investing in military, but I have a real problem paying the pensions and retirement funds of Ukrainian politicians. Like, is that necessary? Because that's what we're doing. And we're getting ready to send another aid package. We're essentially holding up the entire Ukrainian government. We are the taxpayers, not Joe Biden, not John Podesta, not Barack Obama, 
None of them are. It's we are. Those people don't produce shit. They actually, they're a burden onto us. We pay their checks. And can somebody please explain to me why Joe Biden is taking a paycheck from the taxpayer? The guy is worth like $20 million. Please explain to me why this guy whose family has been making millions peddling influence to our foreign adversaries is taking a paycheck from the American taxpayer. And that goes to show you exactly who Joe Biden is. And I'm actually, that's exactly what the next show is going to be about. I want to explain to everybody, just like I explained to you here, the truth about the Democrat Party and its role and the adoption of the progressive movement. I want to explain to people who Joe Biden really is. And I got some awful, awful audio of this guy and how he treated the soldiers that got blown to pieces from his debacle, from his Afghanistan withdrawal debacle that he did not have to do and in fact was told by his top brass not to do it. And he did it anyways, despite the advice from his top brass and generals not to do it. So we're going to be going in through all that. And the parents of the of the kid of the soldiers, the 13 soldiers that died over there have some of the most awful stories of how Joe Biden treated them and what he said to them after they lost their children. Mind you, this is the same guy that checked his watch when those 13 caskets were coming off the airplane with American flags draped over them. The guy checked his watch and the media defended him the entire time. This is why having a state run government media is so bad. Because people are not getting the truth. And it's not only that they're they're shielding you from the truth, but they're actively lying and misleading people. That makes it even worse. It's one thing for the media to cover shit up, but it's a whole nother thing to gaslight them and lie to them. That's that's reaching a whole nother level of propaganda. And so they're complicit in the downfall of this country. And they are going to be the result of Donald Trump being elected. And it is going to be amazing. It is going to be so satisfying to watch Donald Trump get elected, despite the media doing everything, every single thing in their power to keep that from happening. And the administrative state, the U.S. government, is going to lose your, their mind. You're going to see the rats flee the ship. The rats are going to be jumping overboard when Donald Trump wins the election. The moment, I promise you, the moment that that election, the moment that man takes his hand off that Bible, you will see people from the bureaucracy resigning in numbers like we've never seen. And that actually is another thing I'm going to be talking about in the next episode. In the next episode, there's this program that Donald Trump and his, um, I guess you would want to say his his cabinet, even though he's not the president, he has like a cabinet he's working with now, and they have this program called Project 2025, and it's this project of exactly what they're going to do when Donald Trump gets elected. And I'm talking from day one. They have already stated there will be no parade. There will be no thank you tour. There will be nothing. No, not even a dinner. They're not even going to have a presidential dinner on the day he swears in. They're going right to work. And that's exactly what Project 2025 talks about. And the best part about it is that they're actually taking resumes from regular American people. This, I've been saying this. For you can even ask my wife Carla. I've been saying this for months that the the Donald Trump administration should go in and fire everybody, while at the same time accepting applications from regular American people that have expertise and have something to contribute to fixing this country and giving it back to the people. Regular Americans, no politicians, no corrupt bureaucrats, nobody. Regular Americans. Obviously, they need to. Their applications got to be reviewed. I mean, they got to have experience in the field that they're going in. But I'm talking about regular Americans that just want to contribute making this country better and not worry about getting reelected or staying in politics for decades. And that pro- that program is called Project 2025, and that's exactly what the Trump cabinet 
is going to be doing. And it's going to be amazing. And there's a lot of other stuff in that project, too. Um, and, and that's what we're going to be talking about next show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all for tonight. The show went on a little bit longer. And it's okay. We got a lot done. We talked about a lot. I definitely wanted you guys to know about who is responsible for eugenics, where it came from, and the Democrat Party's nasty, nasty, dark, dark history. So if you guys have got any questions, I'm going to leave the research materials in my podcast description so you can go back. Read this article, this Federalist article. It is an amazing article. And I read it like 10 times and it just, every time I read it, something else pops up into my head. And that's why I had so much to talk about as I was reading it to you guys. You should read it, check it out. It's really cool. It's a great article. It's older 2017, but man, is it timeless. I mean, cause it almost fits the progressive ideology. Perfect. This guy absolutely nails it. So yeah, I'll leave that in my podcast description. If you guys want to get a hold of me, get a hold of me at Steven Toriello show at gmail.com. Um, like I said, I'm going to be working on an episode. I'll, I'm going to try and put that out this weekend. And guess what, folks? TGIF, man. Even though I work Saturday, which sucks, dude. But anyways, have you guys seen that meme on Facebook where uh, where Robin jumps up? It's like the comic. It's a comic book picture. Robin jumps up in the in the comic book um, quote bubble. It says, yes. TGIF and then Batman like slaps him and it's, and Robin's face gets smacked to the side and it, and then there's a quotation bubble above Batman that says I work the weekends. It was just funny. I thought it was funny, but I was you guys probably didn't find it very funny being how this is this is audio only. It would be a lot better if I had video to show you, which may be something I'm working on, folks. I am definitely thinking about getting into video. I think we need to broaden our horizons and try and get the show out there, and I think video is the way to go. I got a lot of plans for the show. I'm trying to get a lot of people on board, and more specifically, I'm trying to find a bigger studio so that I can actually get people in person and interview them and not do remote interviews. I want to have something you know, where people just chill, and it's not any professional or expert, but just regular people. I know some wonderful, beautiful people in my life, and God has blessed me to have such good company. And so I want to I want to just sit down and talk to them and let you guys talk to them too. Maybe not talk to them, but let you guys listen to what we have to say and we just talk about normal, you know, average stuff, just have normal conversations. There's so many so many average people, everyday people have so much character and have so much to offer and such good quality traits. And and I just want to be able to share all that with, with everybody. So I'm going to try and get a bigger studio so we can do that. But in the meantime, I'm going to be sticking to this format. And I'm thinking about maybe keeping it to single subject formats like this one. And then that way I'm not rushing through subjects. I don't know. We're just going to – we'll wing it every day. How about that? We'll get to as much as we can in an hour. And so anyways, all right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all for tonight. As always, thank you guys for tuning in. I want you guys to have a good day. Have a great Friday. Have a good weekend. And God bless you and God bless America. You guys have a good day. Bye-bye.